You're using chafing. So this is yeah. chafing tube on, for the rods. For the rods, yeah. So you know when you got these finicky fish, all they're eating is the sand eels. You know they they don't want any live bait. You put anything out there, they won't bite it. I've been doing this for a few years now. So same thing as, as putting a regular hook on with the chafe tube right through the crimp. Put it right to the crimp, just like this. Crimp it, make sure you leave these ends loose. Because if this, if this line, if you do it all the way to the end and this line hits that, it creates a sharp edge and it'll, it'll clip it right off so you'll lose a fish. Pretty much all the time doing that. Cut it. Burn the ends. Get that mushroom. Push it. Get the mushroom stamp. Yep. Push it right down to the crimp. So, the past few years I've been doing this, and the hits I've been getting on it are insane. Are you dead sticking it? So you dead sticking it. You can do it on an 80, 130. You can do it on a spin setup if you want. So about a foot, foot from the Ronzi. Again, get the, the little elastics. Cinch it, cinch it to the line. I like to do it once, twice, once or twice. Pull it so it's nice and tight to the line, just like that. So now you pull it down, pull it up, it won't move, but as long as you cinch it tight enough. Pull it, give it one last pull, grab as close as you can to that cinch, pull it. Boom, it's not going anywhere. Use a, use a soft plastic spring. Put it on just like this. Pull that elastic. Pull it right up. You can you can do various colors. You can do the same colors. I like doing the same colors. Keep it finesse and make it look like a school. Twist the Ronzi, or whatever soft plastic you're using, right onto it. You basically have a, you got a teaser there. Yeah, it's a teaser. Have they bit the so teaser off it. on you? Yes, they do. Sometimes they will, but a lot of the times, you know, you'll you'll see the rod. The rod will hit, and then come back up, and then nothing. And you wait. Sometimes I'll do two or three of these on a line, you know, and eventually because they they're able to pull this off, they won't fail a line. So they'll hit this, and then eventually they're gonna get to the, you know, as long as they're hungry enough and they don't see. So now you got a setup like this, you know, and if you want to rig another one. You ever seen this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Did you come up with this or you see this yeah, from somebody else? This is mine. Came up with this. Alright, so now you want to do another one. Pull it another foot. Got the elastic. Same thing. Cinch it right onto the line like this. Pull it as tight as you can. Get your spring. Boom. Now you got this. Grab your Ron Z, same thing. Twist it right on. You want to make sure you get a lot of the springs have a little gap. You want to make sure you do it all the way up to that loop so that the run, it won't come off if the elastic moves a certain way. The advantage of using an elastic is if it, if it twists around the line, it's going to twist right back to normal. That's a key thing. You want to make sure it's a sh nice short elastic, you know, the small ring elastics. So now you've got the whole chain. Teaser with the hook. Like and it is an epic setup, man. You, I've had so many fish hit this. Big ones too. So, what's the biggest one you've gotten? Eight hundred. Eight, eight fifty, eight hundred. 
and it was in a place where I never thought they'd hit it. So this will work anyway. Don't be afraid to just throw it. If they're on sand deals, they'll eat this. In the water, these these kind of float out a little bit, so it's gonna be more like right, this. Right. You know, it's gonna be it's like nice. a giant bluefish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's nuts, so. dude. What's up, Scotty? What's up, man? What's up? That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, you got the, mm. And they can rip it right off. Boom, gone. Got boom, gone. Left. Boom. And if it wraps around the line, it's gonna, it's gonna come back all the time. Like I said, a lot of the times, you know, you'll get a bite, the rod will go down, and then it's, you know, and then nothing. And a second, a second later, boom, the rod goes off and it's hooked because it got this. Mm. And they feel that line up. Dead sticking. Yep. That's pretty cool. It's like a giant yeah. fluke rig. How do you watch? Uh, it's when they're on sand deals on anything. Teasers. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, so you get the spring. Yeah. Right, so there's a spring on this, yep. a rigging spring. And if a lot of times, if they rip it off, you'll just come back with this. Yeah. You know, and you know that they hit the teaser. Cool. And then Are you, you get finding it, that they'll come back and hit the other ones, or yeah. there's more than one with them? Yeah. I, want to hit one. I, a lot. Sometimes I'll mark. I'll mark a few. Yeah. You know, you'll. A lot of the times with these, especially if you put a weight in front of it, you'll mark it on the screen. It'll look like a down rod. You yeah, know, yeah, because yeah. you're putting it right onto the boat. If and you have a hummer, put another one on. Way, that's what you <laughs> <laughs> so twist it back on. Boom! You're back in action, just like that. That's cool. Yeah, you could put. You could put as many as you want on this rig. If, if you know, you could put. Most I put on it is four, but if you want to put six, seven, you know, you're going to, it's going to look good underwater, I'll tell you that. Interesting. Ron's always the first. That's fucking nuts. I've been fishing the Ron's on the conventional for years, but I've never thought to do that. Kill it, dude. It's such a good rig. Definitely with a sand deal, but yeah. Yeah, and you got to make sure you cinch these down, because if you don't, they'll slide. Yeah, but if you, if you pull this tight enough, it won't move. I'm pulling that pretty hard. You see the short thing, guys? Oh. That's that one. I am in the same spot. So these are squid jigs. Yeah. He had cars on the squid. I'd be here doing something different. Mike Lowe feels a real coward. He's used to anything. Cod, sea bass, yes. he is a real stripers, fluke. Anything, you know, anything that eats squid will eat this. So as long as there's no, you know, pest around dogfish or anything like that, you can use this rig. You to tie it right on. Or you can put it on dropper loops. Try a nice dropper loop. Three. Pull that tight. Just like that. You get a. I like using either the either the offshores or the flash cheese from Jiggin' World. First. Take the elastic off. Pinch the pinch a drop a loop. Get the flash one first. Pull it all the way through. Beat, put the bead on it. That stops that. Either four rows, five rows, whatever you prefer. Whatever you use it for bait, you know. Put it through the drop a loop. Push it through. Pull the hook right up. Boom. Now you got. In that video, we were on that now you got a string. Yeah. With that, you can use any kind of any kind of squids. You could use the, the bodies of these. I saw just the, just the bodies without the leads. Yeah, yeah. So put. Good thing about these squids is actually one dried onto it. You slide that gulp all the way up into the body, so the gulp will go into this, and these tentacles will protect it. You'll see it spinning in these tentacles. You'll see it. And like, if you got little sea bass around a scup, they can't bite the tail off. 
you know, you'll just see it through this. That's sick. And they'll smell it. You'll see the spin and it'll stay on there. See you later. It's a high low. You can put as many loops as you want. As long as there's no pests around, dogfish or anything like that, it's a good rig. You know, put, or if you want to put squid strips or strip up herring, whatever you want to use, put it right on both. I find that uh, in, this, in about July, when they start moving into the structure, strips of, strips of sea robin. Sea robin works. Fire. Anything. Stripping up anything that's around. Skate. Anything. Hell yeah, dude.